Or if you're not, can you redo that exact thing you just did? <laughs> try hard, try hard, <laughs> dog pass. Well, it's not even like a bit, like I just, <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't say it. So, yeah, the try hard yes. podcast is yes. called Tripod, so it's the Tripod Hard Cast. Indeed. Right. Okay. And we're is... the pot, we're the tries, the, the tries. The tries. The try hards. Pods. What episode is this, Jerry? Episode zero? It's pretty fair. App zero. App this zero. origin story. Potential app one. Who nice. knows? We'll see how this shit goes. Nice. Because we have filmed an app one in the past <laughs> yeah. that has perhaps become an app zero at this point. That's maybe. true. That's true. It's so, gone into the Disney vault. Indeed. It's, uh, <laughs> it's that damn mouse. Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it was the first one we shot. Right. It, uh, we didn't really have any experience writing episodes yet. Mm-hmm. We didn't really have any experience. Well, I personally didn't have any experience acting before right. it. And right. I'm very glad that we're not releasing it because I just, yeah, yeah, it just like wasn't a lot to chew on in mm-hmm. the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just like, like, yeah, I understand that I was coming in pretty hot with my acting experience. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, great, great 10 musical, uh, foot, Footloose. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna start. Like, do I know the biz? <laughs> probably. <laughs> Made it. Yeah. I guess we should probably splash some context and say that the three of us are part of a web series, I suppose, is the yeah, is yes. where we are at this I point. Yeah. Called uh Try Hards. Try Hards. We are in one two try. Nice. One two try. We are all hard. Right? It's just a perfect or Am I the only one? Yeah. It's a perfect medley. I can't get right. hard anymore. It's a perfect medley. <laughs> in there. Anyway, uh yeah, so we do the show together and if we're ever referring to show shit. We're talking about the show that we do together, guys. And we're not going to give you context. Go watch the show. <laughs> oh, see, that's right here. And in case you're curious, my name is Powis. I'm on Tryhards. I'm an actor on Tryhards. Do you guys have names? I mean, I do. My name is Jaren, as you guys know. You guys might not. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm Ryan. Uh, play Ryan on Tryhards. <laughs> uh, it's a fantastic <laughs> way to begin, man, because we do that classic kind of, I mean... Us times ten characters right. of ourselves, caricatures of ourselves. Yeah. Some people might know it from workaholics. I know it better from pro wrestling. Yeah, so, well, it's the same idea. Yeah. Pro wrestling, <laughs> they don't use their actual names. This is true. Except yeah. for Bret Hart, Kurt Angle. This is true. This yeah, is true. That's fair. There's a couple. The exception rare. maketh the rule, <laughs> as I am told. But yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and it's been a lot of fun so far. Yeah, the whole freaking thing, man. It's been a lot of fun. From the beginning, from F Zero. I wonder what the first episode will actually be now. Yeah, it's actually a good question, eh? Well, I think we have an idea, right? Do we? We have one written. Something about... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Dude, don't drop those try-hard spoilers. Sorry! I mean... You're gonna drop some, like, hefty plot points from try-hard episodes? Oh, I mean, it's not yeah. really a plot point. We're gonna save that for the other podcast where we talk about the episode after we air it. Right. Right. We need an after show. It's gonna be like, like, like break down the after show. Yeah, exactly. Talking <laughs> talk hard. Talk. <laughs> talking hard. Where we just talk <laughs> <one shit. laughs> about the wrong episodes. It's just hosted by us. Yeah, and I hear the guests on our I, own I show. think there's like. A, I, wow, I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> that moment in minute three. <laughs> Breaking yeah. out in the three minute thing, like, hey, yo, I know we got the big fans out there, but yeah, fuck. Oh, excuse me, whoopsies. <laughs> don't know. Hopefully, our grandmaster, Mr. Deep Barn, can, uh, yeah, eh, 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 eh. I, yeah I don't know. I don't think, do we, do we even have to care about that in the podcast world? I guess that's a good I don't point. think so. Like, once we're getting points, I'm, I've been telling you guys, once we're getting that me undies cash, <laughs> that's once, just... once we're on the me undies bankroll. <laughs> Then you know we can say whatever we want. I'm pretty sure you just announce that you're a podcast and like you yeah. get an email as part of your like your uh, pretty much right confirmation yeah. email like confirm that you want a podcast. Here's your MeUndies sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Click click click. Yeah, in a week we're gonna be getting like the tier one advertisers, like the little guys kind of thing, and then we're gonna work our way up to HelloFresh and the big dogs. It's mm-hmm. it's, great. it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, podcasting is beautiful. Freaking making tryhards has been crazy, man. We get to express ourselves, get to link up. Uh, Take some of the fruits of Party's crew that he's put together for us. Yeah. Nomad Productions might as well name drop the freaking whole team, the whole yeah, squad. Everyone, everyone's come together and basically 
This is Indy, technically. Is that correct? Our yeah. producer's in the back. Is that correct, our producer? Uh, it is? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's Indy. Because we have no money. That's exactly <laughs> true. Yeah. And we all just put it on the line for the TLC, for the love, and we've made some pretty freaking funny stuff. For those that don't know, we've recorded a couple episodes so far. Yeah. I think like seven at this point. Including F Zero. Okay. It's actually seven months. Yeah. It's been about two months or just longer, like two and a half. Nice, nice, nice. And That's like, it felt like forever. Yeah. Like, it feels like this is my life now. Straight. And like, it's fucking awesome. Not so bad. Not so yeah, it's so nice to have somewhere to wear all my fucking clothes. That's, I was just <laughs> thinking about that today. Right. All of my pants were raves, man. It's like the, uh, it's like the Chinese finger trap, because like, I don't want to have these many clothes, but I have a lot of clothes, yeah. so I can use them on tryhards and like. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's you probably, find probably a solution. Right? Find your yeah. blessings. <clears throat> find your blessings, because you know, just like the sound people who are of varying quality, uh, bring their own mics and stuff. We bring our own freaking gear. <laughs> you know, the cameras, all this stuff. It's a beautiful coming together of a little uh, village that wants to freaking make some shit. Oh, it's village. Been absolutely. Fucking fun the whole time. Excuse nice. my language. The craziest thing about this whole process is just like, this started out as like a joke, like mm -hmm. maybe ten years ago, maybe maybe longer or less. Sorry, but more just like ridiculous yeah, stuff yeah. that we were doing, and then someone would just say that's an episode. When's the first time someone said that's an episode? I think the first time. Dive, man. Probably uh, grade eleven. I think is not. Or maybe grade 12? I think it was that, yeah, something like that. I was probably hearing it in grade 12 for the first time. Grade 12, I was like, I was maybe 13, like mm -hmm. right after, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could have been just after, I suppose. Yeah, I think it, I think it was. <clears throat> Are we gonna age Anyway, ourselves? that's yeah. uh, that, that's the uh, that's a ballpark we're working in. No, yeah. seriously, though. But, <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, we've been homies for a long time, and we freaking had this idea, and s some people were writing those ideas down i mean i have a yeah. whole list <laughs> yeah i think i have a list too oh my long ass. notes in my phone yeah. old phones i one of the only things i wanted to say was the list i yeah, like yeah, sent yeah, it to yeah. myself I'm just like long ass list a lot of the ridiculous ones are probably a little too ridiculous right or just like well, little the, nuggets yeah and so and so self-referential and yeah, stuff like that or like true. it's pretty hard to, to like write those out into something that people can follow yeah it doesn't make any sense a lot of them have ended up like being inspiration for jokes or like yeah, a absolutely. launching yeah. point for an episode. Yeah. Which is something that's been like really funny about the writing process for me personally is right. like, I start out with an idea for like a joke mm. and then a whole like episode takes Same. like around. I think that, I think that's the way to do it. I mean, at least that the, the length of writing we're doing so far, yeah. like, I mean, I can't speak for, you know, full length scripts or anything because sure. I don't have that in me yet, yeah. Yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, that's, I do the exact same thing, right? I just think of like one funny joke and build the up around that. Yeah. So. Right. Not to go there, but I was on our get motivated this morning and it was like, some guy was like, how do I code my, like, do you have any tips for like writing a screenplay? Like, I was like, start. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but how about yeah. start? <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. So you know, we get the ball rolling. Yeah. Couple types, and then the. I mean, it's beautiful that we are writing these exaggerated versions of ourselves. Yeah. That like, have that, consistency. I know it's kind of difficult sometimes if you're gonna write, um, something that's long form as in like multiple episodes are episodic and then it's like oh but then there's a contradiction here if you know my female eggplant protagonist thought this in episode one and then in episode three it doesn't go that way but with us it's like is that a right line is yeah. that a true line is that a pal line yeah pretty sure that's a this person line okay we'll save it for that yeah. person line. we have that really smooth when we do our writers rooms it's a very smooth process right very smooth process yeah I'm we're usually pretty fucking quick. That's yeah, actually true. To punch yeah. up a script, it doesn't take long, man. No. Yeah. Which is respect to the people who write the scripts beforehand. Oh, yeah. Usually sure. A and B, all due respect to P and P. <laughs> but I, I don't really uh, write the freaking scripts too much beforehand. Yeah. At present, at present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see how it shakes out. But yeah, I mean, we all get to edit them together, and it's just yeah. such a blast. And yeah. honestly, one of my favorite parts and one of my favorite things about tryhards was from episode zero was just like, okay, be ready to take the piss out of yourself. Mm. Yeah. Be ready to come outside of your own comfort zone. Oh my God. I mean, you and I basically up zero were like, okay, I'm 
I mean, I was in a less than flattering situation in F-Zero, yeah. and you Can were... Can we talk about it? No, nah, maybe we should save it in case we go into a future episode. Build the suspense, build the suspense. Yeah, but, but yeah, sorry. we both had like pseudo non-flattering things yeah. that were kind of like, not necessarily sensitive, but like yeah, kind of, yeah. and then it's like, you know, freaking... <clears throat> You just have to do it and just have to embrace it. And if you're on there and you're not going plus ultra and not giving it your all, it's going to absolutely show. Yeah. And it's like, what do you, what, there's no point in having a toe in the water, like let's cannonball into the show. Oh, yeah. Like if you're trying to do like funny things, right? Like why would you half measure it? Indeed. Yeah, right? Like it's just, Indeed. just why make it less funny? Indeed. I think that was the mentality I had in the beginning. Ooh. And having moments like that helped me take the plunge eventually. Right. And I think once I fully embraced what this could be, that's yeah. when it started to, like, I really bought in. Right. I think I, like, said that I was in, yeah. and, like, did the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. But then it wasn't until we started doing maybe, like, the second and the third one, mm. where we did, like, two short ones in a day. Right. Where I really felt, like, the scripts were better, I think. Yeah, that's <clears throat> definitely true. Yeah. I think every script since the first one has been just been getting better yeah better, it's really. really fair. yeah like we've been getting better at writing them and formatting them i think writing for each other's voices has become easier too yeah that's like cool. i'm like this sounds like something that ryan's character would say or this sounds like something pal's character would say Jokes. and like writing for myself has been pretty easy but and fun it's been a lot of fun i mean honestly all due respect but i think you're personal glow up Jaren has kind of been in lockstep with the tryhards glow up in a way like our episodes have gotten better and better and like like I, I feel I have improved at acting throughout this process yeah, everyone Ryan has, has for sure as yeah. well but all due respect you're probably the the, the, le the least actor of the three <laughs> of us at the beginning oh my god <laughs> uh, two I watch that six. first episode it makes me cringe man right? right there's still one episode where my performance is like kind of bugs me still right, and right, I talked right. to Par about potentially yeah. doing a reshoot yeah. but I was like you know what watching those episodes yeah. gave me motivation I was like I see what I look like on screen right now I need mm. to be better than this yes. right if I'm gonna be on screen yeah I mean screen. it's just like it's not worth sweating stuff like that right cause like it's not like we have a limited run of episodes or something right, right? just like just do a better one right right and then just do a better one after that right yeah. and then like you know it's valid I think it's like a perfectionism thing which yeah, I'm yeah. trying to be yeah. better about because yeah. I like if it's not perfect a lot of times it won't get started like we talked about that already and we talked about earlier just like start mm. is like the biggest thing and like sometimes if i don't have the perfect opportunity to do something i won't do it yeah it's right. like sometimes something is better than nothing right oftentimes right something is better than nothing mm -hmm. and in your ryan in your like musical time yeah i'm sure and party as well i'm sure <laughs> you've understood that like i mean i shouldn't say i'm sure about it you probably understood freaking the projects aren't necessarily finished just abandoned and it's like, sure, we could go refilm that scene, yeah. and we could refilm a whole bunch of scenes, and we could refilm all of Tryhards at Golden Hour, and we could refilm, you know, everything, and like, we, we can do what we can. Yeah. And if the opportunity presents itself, and there's like an Achilles heel of an episode, and we can fortify it with steel with a reshoot, yeah, that'd be cool. But at the same time, like, if that's going to be the difference between, like, everyone being like, you know what? All these reshoots and shit. I'm trying to do fresh shit. I'm trying to get, you know, you gotta be. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. It's part of the crew. I definitely can relate to that 100%. <laughs> music wise, like my my uh, hard drive of, of music is just a graveyard of projects. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, just all these half written right. songs and stuff and that I, I didn't like enough to finish, but right. like, you know, I should probably just finish them. Right. And then if they suck, just write a better one. And if you played it for me, I'd probably be like, mm. <laughs> that's, that's the craziest part of that shit like that. Yeah. You show it to somebody else yeah. who's not looking at it with the same critical eye. Yeah. They're like, this is sick. What oh, are you talking man. about? And I'm like, yeah. oh shit, maybe it is. It's like, you gotta be in the right mood mm. to even see it. And it's like, it was it my mood that liked this? Or was right. it actually that good? Mm -hmm. I mean, drugs and alcohol can come into play in that case as well. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, him, definitely. was I just hammered when I was listening <laughs> to that? Like, whatever. And then, like, play something and someone's like, oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> like yeah. I thought it was like 50 sounds going at once all in the wrong direction. Who knows? Maybe it might be and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's a thing. And we're mm -hmm. completely deep in it with our... Freaking show making, man. Yeah. We make a freaking show together. And 
fucking amazing. It's fucking incredible. Nice. We got lots of backup. Shout out to Aaron Martin for those blank swears <laughs> back in the day. For those of you who don't know, we have a long uh, history together, the three of us. Yeah. Long time friends, since time. Uh, since time. So, you know, if you hear a reference that you don't understand and we all laugh at it, it's because we know it and you don't. Yeah. So, because <laughs> it's just, it's one, two, three, yeah. and four. Yeah. You're just hanging out. You're so, you know, just pretend to get the joke, laugh, yeah. maybe, you know, spend money on things we're selling, <laughs> uh, get some ad deals, uh, watch the, the show. Put them on the table. Yeah. It's honest, baby. That's yeah. what it is. I know, I know the MeUndies is watching. <laughs> I know they are. Get at me, MeUndies. <laughs> Yo, yeah. oh, man, it's vindication. I'm playing the long game from F-Zero here. Vindicated! I am selfish! I am wrong! <laughs> what is that actual song? I have no idea. Hope dangles on a string like soul-slinging redemption. Huh? And now we're gonna get our freaking yeah yeah. <laughs> now we can't make God. Money. Yeah, we just yeah, the DMCA. Oh, perfect! <laughs> Ryan drops the perfect promo. So heartfelt, like open enough to be like, you know what? I might buy their me undies with the yeah, promo yeah, code yeah. that I come in in a crooked little. <laughs> you got over because of my three bars. Oh, Sony Music Group. Oh God, <laughs> what is it? Oh my gosh, there's a line from. I, I don't know if this is straight up intellectual property <clears throat> theft, but so be it. Uh, a song from the Wire soundtrack yeah. called Oh My God by a guy named Michael Franti, I really hope it is. And it was like, some, the lyric was something like, stealing brain cells from the unborn, but you come after us for sampling the James Brown horn? And I was just like, <laughs> That's the reality, bro. But our shit's original, man. Our shit, yeah, yeah, original. We got original outfits, original freaking spots. We're gonna be decorating the house in no time. Freaking cast members ever expanding. Yeah. And we're gonna be knocking off episodes and showing people how to view in parties. Yeah. yeah. Season one, who knows even the format of the whole freaking probably seasons. We should probably talk to the producer about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, man, it's like, I think one of the tricky things, I don't know what you just said, but it just, um, got me thinking about like writing stuff out. I'm like, did the show do this already? Did they do this on community? Did they do this right, on right, yeah, workaholics? Yeah, yeah. Am I taking this from somewhere? Mm -hmm. And like, I think maybe it was Par saying like everything's been taken. Oh, dude, yeah, years. for sure. I mean, like, yeah, like we're talking how our show's original and everything, dude. We didn't come up with this no. format or anything, yeah. right? Like, yeah. how many shows about about three no. young dudes like yeah. getting into funny situations that yeah. they've been? Right? Honestly, like, we just put our own spin on it, right? That's, right. I mean, I guess that's like what originality is anyway. Right. Right. I mean, I there's agree. some visionaries who can just pull things out of thin air, but right. I don't know. It's tough, man. Yeah. It's tough to see a color you've never seen before. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's the same thing with like content creation and content generation. Like, yeah. Yeah. I it's really I think I had a point to what you just said, and now it's escaped me. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to see a new color, and yeah, my grandpa agrees with that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Would you come here, please, young man? <laughs> Hold on. Who are you again? Um, shoot. Originality. Crap. Oh, was it done? <clears throat> Yeah, no, I like what you said about uniqueness there. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like all we can do is apply our lens. Yeah, do it our way. Our way, our experience. Like, that's what makes it different. Like, yeah. kids will, you know, say, Mom and Dad, you, it wasn't like this when you were growing up. And it wasn't. They People didn't have iPhones and stuff, but yeah. older people still tried to exploit the youthful energy type things. Sure. Like internships have existed since time uh, yeah you know and they will continue to exist doesn't matter if you're doing it on a laptop or a freaking phone or whatever you yeah, know yeah. what i mean like yeah, it's, all some, the same. it's all the same thing in one way or another but we painted in a new skin yeah yeah that's what makes me feel better about being a hack you know <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> no no it's just you just take a philosoph philosophical approach to originality and you know everything Sorry. all comes around there's only 12 notes in music yeah all right <laughs> I hope it works in court. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I there's, only, there's only 12 jokes in comedy. It's, uh, oh, is, it, is that a thing? I don't know. It's not. It's <laughs> no. being originality. Are you like that, huh? Yeah, no. I, oh, sorry, producer, for the clapping. My bad. Oh, yeah. um, but I watched some, like, 
uh, hip hop documentary the other day or something, and the guy has this wall of records similar to this, and he goes, oh, I'm gonna uh, steal from these guys. These are all like people I'm gonna yeah. steal from. Then he pulls a record out and he goes, well, I guess I'm not gonna steal from them. <laughs> and then puts it back and it's just like, oh yeah, cause you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get in trouble, man. But like, dude, no lie, I think I said this to you the other day, when I was younger, like seven years old, eight years old, writing songs, I'm pretty sure I wrote, fall on the floor, beg for more or something, or yeah. leave the floor, don't ask for more. And like, then I heard it in a freaking deny song, sure. wasting my time. I'm serious, I had this sh written in my little chicken scratch, right. and then I heard them on much music, like, how did they get my, <laughs> how did they get my words, man? Who do they know that has my shit? But it's like, I've definitely had that happen. Right, like, right? Definitely, it's, especially, um, I, I've never had it happen with like lyrics or anything, right. but like, uh, like guitar riffs and stuff like that. I mean, I play a pretty derivative style of, of music, but like, I've Still. definitely written a riff and then and I hadn't heard it before. Then I hear it afterwards, right? You know, by some other band who's right. actually getting paid to do it, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> and then it's <clears throat> kind of different. Back but to the like, drum board you know, me. I think I'm. It's like I, I think I'm a pretty original person, but you know. Yeah. I think that because I, you know, make a comic book about vegetables, which is just like, <laughs> nowadays I see this sh everywhere, like, I can, everywhere I look I see yeah. vegetables with eyes and I'm like, oh god, like, moving on, but at the same time, you know, there's the Seth MacFarlane principle of, uh, you can make commentaries about the planet as long as it's not, like, present day humans, mm -hmm. and then you, right, get, yeah, then yeah, you yeah. get picked up, yeah. type thing, so he does his million ways to die in the West, right. which is just like, taking the piss out of everything modern, but just like with native people and Charlie Theron kissing him. That'd be nice to have that much money. Just like, who's gonna <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> Who am I going to cap? Could be Charlie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, wifey, it's for the role. There's nothing weird about that. Rehearsals? Uh, <laughs> reminds me of Charles Gambino. He's got a lyric. I'm writing movies where I'm making out with Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> that guy? That is the ultimate... That is one of my ultimate, like, wow, what an influence, what an idol. Dude. From Derek Comedy. Dude, absolutely, so yeah, good. like 100%. That's, that's like Derek a similar comedy. comment to what we're doing now. Yeah, true. Seriously, dude. True. So just look at that. 10 years from now, we're all going to have crazy sick rap albums. It, it's <laughs> not even... Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and dude. that's it for us today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, seriously, like, that shit is real, man. Like... There were people in those videos, yeah. you watch them now, Human Giant was that like three person comedic contingent who yeah. was like, you know, the super tall guy was like, I'm the tall guy and all the stuff now with the, the, the brown, light, dirty brown hair was always, and then the like, Avi was the other guy, the, yeah. Nick Kroll maybe? The, no. no. I don't think so. The guy with the buck teeth and the, and the cul-de-sac. Should have brushed up on my celebs before this. But yeah, I don't whatever. Know Paul Scheer. Is that who it is? I think so. Paul okay. Oh, oh, oh yeah, the teeth is that's definitely Paul that's, Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Dude from uh, the you know. Oh yeah, yeah that's they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's absolutely Paul Scheer. They were in a three-person comedy cohort that like, oh, should we link up with College Humor? And then they did like a crossover, hardly working, where it's like, oh my god, the Human Giant guys are way bigger than us, like yeah. type thing. And then they all, they all became big. College Humor almost is like the smallest of them all now, yeah. and they were kind of the biggest, but like, Bro Rape, you guys remember that one from back in the day? No. There was, that was a Derek Comedy one, where yeah. it was like, yeah. bro, I got the GameCube, bro! It's the memento, like, the memento, uh, <laughs> yeah. the thing, yeah. So, like, just play GameCube, dude, like, dude, why do you have a bunch of dildos in your bag? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> we're just playing GameCube! And that dude ended up on SNL, yeah. and I'm here sitting thinking like, oh, if I say F-words and S-words, no, I'm not gonna get a job. Yeah. Like no, in, plenty of plenty of those guys you know, in uh, Derek Comedy and stuff like that are, are like pretty. De I, I was gonna say big time. I, I don't know if I can if I can gauge what big time. Whoa. But they're they're all like comedy writers. They write for shows and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? I, except for you know like Don Glover, who's just yeah. looking everything he touches is gold. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah, yeah, her too. Yeah, blowjob girl. Yeah, <laughs> drying her tongue. I'm gonna yeah. make it so dry so for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna and then I'm gonna grab it like this. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do, baby? And then I'm gonna <laughs> no, no, no. And then I'm gonna, uh, uh, no, no, no. Oh my gosh. And she's got yeah. a long, she's a legend though. Absolutely. That Kimmy Schmidt is real. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, dude, it's just crazy that like <clears throat> the different levels. Yeah. Where, who knows where we're going to end up with this triarts? Who knows what the next 
troop is that perhaps we're going to link up with to have ours hardly working special with. Yeah, let's find some coattails, man. You know? Well, the thing that's exciting about this for me, when I think about it, like on the surface, what is the show? Three roommates trying to make it as a band, like a boy band. Yeah. But like, it's not like a cohesive thing. We got like the jingle writers, Ryan. Yeah, right. We got the rappers, Powis, and the dancers, Jer. Right. Like, is that really like, what are you guys? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's an art group. Yeah, it's Straight just up. like we all just do shit and we're all just trying to make it as a collective, but it's, yeah. an individual. it's a creative collective. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cross platform creative collective. Yeah. Uh, we just kind of link up our auras and energy. <laughs> just kind of see what comes out. So, yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. Like, like, honestly, <laughs> as facetious as that is, I think it is really cool. And like, I think the only way to kind of. Uh, genre band yeah. is to kind of dance through the cracks and dance through the lines and mix up with uh, different people yeah, yeah. and freaking you know we're all kind of like similar you know different as we are like right. we're like born in the same year and mm. more we went to the same high school but, uh, but like you know yeah. we yeah we're reasonably similar guys we're reasonably similar. Yeah. and we do this we absolutely freaking do this yeah what was that thing you said about like the <laughs> That thing I was looking forward to, what is it? Oh, how we're just like a complete smorgasbord. Yeah. Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. See, that's the one thing about podcasts. We're like, like a, We're like a, 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 collect, a creative platform charcuterie. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Okay, like we're done with the podcast. <laughs> Writer's room. What's up, uh, millennial white girls? <laughs> What's up? Oh, actually, that brings me to my next point. My favorite episode of The Office. Was when. <laughs> yeah, oh my yeah. god! Right, yeah, I'm such a Dwight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we're a podcast, yeah. 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 we have to do things that every podcast yeah, has dude. done. Okay, <laughs> Office or Friends? Go! Everyone say it on three. One, two, three. Chandler. Oh my god, I said it. Which is kind of crappy that I made that joke because I love Friends so much and I love Chandler so much. He's definitely one of my early comedy. Influences without a doubt. The Chan Chan Man. What was that one thing? Can you be any man? I don't know. I never. I never really watched oh, Friends. Dude, I did. I was, I was late to the game. Friends party. Nah, nah, I wasn't big on it, honestly. I was there. I remember. I was a big Friends fan, but I was unable to watch TV on the weekday, so that was a yeah. bit tricky near the end. Mm -hmm. And I had to get the lowdown from Victoria Perez. Oh, yeah. This is. Before the days of the internet, ladies and gentlemen, and I had to actually, <laughs> I had to actually ask my friend the next day at school yeah. what happened on TV last night. Mm. Look at that. That dates you. And she actually told me, and I actually thought, wow. And I read it in a newspaper later that day. With the, the friend synopsis? And the like paper? some, it wasn't quite Metro, <laughs> and we didn't have Dose back then either. I don't know, there was more newspapers though. True. True. And there used to be a lot of them. That's a good point. <laughs> and they're just kicking around like, oh, the series finale of Friends. Spoilers. <laughs> okay, maybe that wasn't spoilers. But yeah, uh, she, you gotta be careful not to spoil Friends. She gave it. <laughs> she gave it. The blog will come for you. Yeah, you can cancel us on our episode zero. <laughs> <laughs> How many episodes is Tryhard's gonna go? Honestly, I was thinking about that. I think it's going wrong. <laughs> but you heard it here first, folks. I was thinking about the cancel thing, and I was like, how tricky it is to navigate writing comedy in a time where everyone's so sensitive. Right. I think that's part of the reason why, like, the one of the most fun things I've had is, like, weaving in my beliefs or opinions about some shit mm. into the characters, but doing it in a way where you, like, satirize it right. so much, right. where right. you, like take something that's going on in the world maybe yeah. or something about people yeah and then use this ridiculous character to like highlight it right and hopefully people see that and they're like oh look at this ridiculous guy doing this shit but i know a guy who's like that mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. it brings up something in them that they're mm -hmm. like oh maybe i do stuff like that right like totally man totally writing for my own character i'm kind of using it as a vehicle to i guess flesh out some like flaws of myself at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, th that's got to be like a huge part of it is definitely making fun of like <clears throat> us first mm -hmm. and foremost. Yeah, right? like that's that's the easiest way to stay in our lane is just to like Very much make so. fun of ourselves, right? Because yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty like I don't I don't know if I buy into so much. People are like super offended by comedy or like that that really matters. I don't think it's as big a deal as 
people kind of make it out to be. Right. But even so, like, it's pretty easy to, like, be considerate of yeah, other people when we make stuff. We definitely don't have to take advantage of, like, other people to make a joke. Right. Right. right? Like, right. we're all totally jokes to begin with, so yeah. it's, <laughs> we're just it's endless. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. And I liked, we kind of went over every episode, the content, Jared and I were just talking about it, because I was yeah. like, man, I want tryhards to be, like, as woke as possible, man. <laughs> I just want to be woke hards, man. No, no, no. no. Woke. I just want to be called the radical woke. left. Of I actually just want it series. to be a lecture. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like we went through all the things, and I was like, okay, this one. I mean, can we throw out some vague stuff about what the episodes are about? Like, can we yeah. drop the R word? I'm oh, sure. Yeah. So like we go into like Reiki in one episode, for yeah, example, yeah. Right, which. Yeah. We kind of satirize it in a way, but also honor it by showing how real it is. Where Reiki is a thing that people that I believe in, and people just don't. And people, like, yeah. like it's crazy. I had a colleague who was a Reiki master of 21 years, and it did not... He wasn't comfortable sharing that until I said enough stuff. Like, he was like, dude, why are you bringing vegetables to soccer all the time, man? Like, cherry tomatoes are not breakfast. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe not for you, bro, but for everybody else that needs some sugar, like, because before coaching, I'll zip to a uh, superstore and get some whatever mandarins and some cherry tomatoes and yeah, maybe yeah. some kiwis, depending on what it is. And then all of the coaching staff can get that sugar rush before they take on the sugar rush army. And then he was like, what's the deal? And I'm like, dude, the effect is so, like... What uh, exponential? Like you eat clean, you eat the tomato, then your body's using that tomato fuel, and then it's less like down and blah blah blah. And he's like, okay, there was a sentence in there that's like, so you believe in like Reiki stuff or what? And I was like, <laughs> and then I have kind of some canned uh, responses for certain uh, questions like that, like astrology, for example. Someone's like, you believe in astrology? I'm like, well, the moon can control the tide. The tide is made of water. I'm made 70% of water. <laughs> so yes, I think the moon can control me a little bit as yeah, well. <laughs> and like, I basically dropped that and he's like, dude, I'm a Reiki master 21 years. Nice. And I was like, what? So I really love that, e like, we, sh we show respect. Yeah. We show respect to the Reiki yeah. and that up. I like, uh, I like your, your strategy. You're like an investigative reporter. For a while online comedy here, like the New York Times. Like, I'm Michael Barbaro. This is the Daily. Uh, Dude, I is totally the pot? In my prep on the way to the pot, I felt uh, investigative reporter vibes from myself. Yes. I was like, hmm, 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 hmm. but yeah, no, I love. Like, I think you're a bit of an aficionado on comedy in general, just on the amount of comedy you've consumed and studied. Sure. Like you've, Jer has watched an metric buttload of stand-up comedy. <laughs> like the last few years, especially. maybe one hundred percent of the stand-ups on Netflix. No, uh, I would say like seventy-five. But there's a lot. lot. There's a lot. Yeah. Honest. But like you probably put, press play. Have you ever started one and finished like not? Oh, not watching the end. There's been a couple that are just like really unwatchable. Yeah, you know, the ones that them, the ones that are unwatchable are the ones that are preachy. Right. Yeah. Right. But there's there's a couple where I was like. I understand I'm trying to get a message across, mm -hmm. but I, we talked about it where it's yeah. like you walk that fine line where you want to bring up issues in like society or right. be woke, right. but you don't want to be somebody who's like on a soapbox talking down to people. Right. And yeah. you still want to be funny. And like some people can walk that line really well, mm -hmm. and other people it's just like they're just like talking at you. And right. Like, yeah. It feels yeah. like a lecture. That's the finesse that I am aiming for, but we really nailed it. We did I Reiki. Think. What were the other ones we did? Well, uh, we. I mean, like, my character's kind of, like, a wannabe influencer. Right. And so we kind of yeah. parody some, like, influencer types where, like, I mean, basically using charity for clout. Right. <laughs> right. As, like, that kind of got Virtue touched signaling. Some, virtue signaling yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Which has been, like, of which there's been no shortage. Being a little bit of, like, a woke <laughs> warrior conspiracy theorist. Yeah. yeah. Is, like, Who says they're woke? Idiots. <laughs> Yo, but seriously, seriously. Yeah, it's like, Can we edit that out? in a way, like, the conspiracy <laughs> theory stuff and, like, the yeah. woke stuff yeah. is, some of it is stuff that I, like, half believe in, some right. of it is stuff that I actually believe in, Right. but I'm making fun of myself by letting this ridiculous character say it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm like, I can now say this through this ridiculous character, because if I say this stuff to somebody in a regular conversation, like right. that time thing, I... Right. 
I agree with that to an extent. What type thing? Oh, the type astrology thing. thing. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Like I, was I do agree with that to an extent. But you drop that in a conversation with somebody like, oh, look this fucking hippie, right? And they like will dismiss you in the yeah. same way that your Reiki friend might have been dismissed. True. So many times that it was just <laughs> beaten away from him. And he's like, I'm not even gonna put this out of my pocket. Right. <laughs> Ricky, what'd you say? Like, dude, freaking. No, seriously, I mean, I'm not trying to put, I'm going to keep the identities quiet here, but we have a friend, a common oh, friend, yeah. and he was telling me about his life at work. Yeah. And we're talking about anime, and I'm a big lover of anime, deep lover of anime. And he's telling me that, like, people at work are, you know, throw shade on anime. And I'm like, isn't it mainstream? Like, and he's I like, so. he's like no, so. that's what I thought too. But I guess in the construction world, it's a little different. And yeah, yeah, so and, I guess. and then <laughs> the stories went on, and then I hear like, I'll I'll uh, withhold my impression and say, uh, well, what our our viewer doesn't. That's actually what you're good. talking about. That's actually fair. Uh, one time I was at work and I got some guy got mad at me because I ate a carrot, and I was just like, who the. F is gonna get pissed at you for eating a carrot and what kind of environment is this <laughs> that you're like here and someone like hostile or literally you can't like people are gonna just get on you yeah, and it was yeah. funny because one of my uh i omega woke instagram accounts i follow <laughs> mr shaka bars himself he's actually legit um <laughs> posted something it was like a tweet and it was like People that walk around with bottles of water just think they have life figured out, don't they? And the response was like, this tweet is proof that you can literally just be drinking water and people are going to get pissed about it. And it's like, people are going to get pissed, man. They trigger triggerable people get triggered. So I guess we got to work around it, but at the same time, you know. It is what it is. I'm just happy with the woke levels. Or are we just going to go the other direction? And just lean into it and be one of those super cool. I'm I'm like a, a rebel comedian, right? <laughs> I don't really care what what's PC to say, right? Mm -hmm. And the, you can't cancel me, cause screw you. And then it's like, bro, you got hard canceled. You got Command Z. It's like bad oh, vibes man. to hear your name. I, I, I'm so sick of that fucking uh, that. That uh, trope from comedians like, oh, everyone's so sensitive now. You got to be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. Do you like the worst that's happened to any of them is like they got like one show canceled. True. Like all these dudes are still getting, they're still raking true. it in. That's actually being true. comedians, right? Yeah. Like they, they're not persecuted, do they, man. Do they get in trouble for what they say? They get galvanized. Like their audience just gets even further behind them when shit like that happens. Too, like, yeah, I don't know. Like I don't think I've seen any like tangible negative outcomes for right? any of these dudes like Chappelle got talked at like yeah. he was gonna get cancelled after sticks and stones too big, but then so many people were like also that was super great yeah. and there was like Rotten Tomatoes maybe had low but then the Metacritic was high I know, I know. but even like even Louis CK right who was not for what he said but exactly. actions wise everything yeah. was you know cancelled like I don't know he went away for like a few months and then still you know, killing it pretty much on top of the comedy game. So, I don't it's know. True. I, I, I don't buy it. I, I don't think, buy that it's an issue. I think there's, people are so reactive mm. right now yeah. that like, they see something and they're like, he's cancelled forever or he did something shitty and it's like, we've talked about this recently where it's like, the people that are the loudest get the most attention but mm. they might not be the majority of people. Totally. Yeah, that's probably pretty fair. It's totally. like, and they can hold sway. I don't know, man. I, don't I think it's just who you give paying attention to. Dude. Yeah, it's like, like unless, they, unless there's like some genuine concerns, right? Yeah, like right. that's of course a different story. Yeah. But like you know, just getting offended over a relatively harmless joke or something, or you know, a, a distasteful joke someone's apologized for or whatever. Right. Who cares? Mm -hmm. um, no, I, just, I don't think it's worth you know getting getting up in arms about people, you know, loudly opposing those things. Whatever, just let them let them oppose it. Yeah, it's true. Fine. I think if anything, like, people that look at it logically will see the people that are so vocal and loud and realize they're being ridiculous. I think the concern right. is people see them being loud and ridiculous and they're like, look, everyone's so sensitive. It's like, they're just really sensitive. I agree with you wholeheartedly, but then you also said at the beginning of that, people who think about this logically, 
and then <laughs> I heard people and logic in the same sentence, and I got a little bit, uh, I don't know if this is going to work. Get yourself out of that theory. Pretzel. <laughs> Pretzel. Person, maybe, Jeez. people. It's like, hey, what? This guy's chanting. Yeah. What are we chanting? What are we chanting? Like, you know, perhaps. But, yeah, I mean, you hope that the, the real will guide the culture. The level-headed, the I guess. forgivers, yeah. and not the populist leaders that have actually taken over every country <laughs> of power. It, but, it is basically <laughs> that jump, yeah. It's, it's comedians <laughs> making maybe risque jokes. Leaders of the free world. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it is just that, that, <laughs> just that easy. It's the connection, the ladder. Yeah. You watch out, Joe joke. Rogan is going to be running the world. Oh, dude. He, um, in, he kind of already is. Joper. Joper. <laughs> Are we shifting podcast gears again? Now we're going for a Joe Rogan experience kind of podcast? Have we got like three hours to go on this one now? Oh, like, <laughs> you got to try DMT. Dude, here's the Yo, thing. Yo, pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, classic. <laughs> classic, yeah. You guys, um, big Joe Rogan guys, podcast-wise? Not really, man. I could never really sit through it. How depends, about this story? Depends on the person he has. Like, if it's somebody that I like, I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good Yeah, yeah pretty much. Mm -hmm. Or, like, when he has comedians on, it's fun because they're just shooting the shit. Right. And they're just talking shit. Right. Telling jokes, and they usually are funny. Yeah. And, like, sometimes they go deep, which mm -hmm. I like. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. Sometimes when you listen to, I, I notice when you listen to a person's podcast over and over again, they get repetitive. Right. He starts telling oh, a lot of the sure. same stories again. Right. Yeah, well, he, doesn't, like, like he doesn't, like, I don't know if he still does, but at the point where, like, I first became aware of him, it was, like, Every single day, and it was like four hour podcast. Exactly. Like, yeah, no, it's, it's hard not to you know, overlap quite yeah, a bit exactly. with that, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah. And like, I found that like, sometimes when I'm listening to podcasts, sometimes I'm trying to listen to like escape, mm. and sometimes they start talking about shit that I'm trying to escape from. Right. Like right now, it's just talking about like fucking COVID stuff, and I'm yeah. like, I'm not really here for that right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. That's like. It just yeah. gets me thinking too much about yeah. it, and I'm like, I already think about this shit too much sometimes. <laughs> Do you guys... Oh, sorry to interrupt you. No, it's cool. Do you guys have, like, any pods just historically throughout your life that you've loved, that you've listened to, that, like, a number of episodes? I was, like, a big pro wrestling pod. Oh, dude, yeah. I love Talk is Jericho, because I mm. love hearing wrestling stories. Mm. Um, Back in the day, he would crank a lot of quality with a lot of... I mean, when he first came out of the scene... It was really significant because a lot of wrestling is behind the curtain and the fans like the yeah. behind the scenes stuff. And usually you have to wait for WWE to make a documentary to get the really juicy behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. But Jericho <laughs> would just say, here's why I got fired. Or here's why this person left here. Having people over because WWE is like really loyal. Like we're the only pro wrestling entity on earth. Yeah. Come on. Like that's how it is. And then Jericho's talking about other ones and it's like, whoa, you're with WWE, but you're talking about this. And long story short, he ends up dipping, but... Yeah, that's a big one. What about you, Ryan? Um, I don't. I don't like. I I listen to podcasts pretty frequently, but I I don't really listen to. I definitely don't listen to like any comedy ones or anything, or even like any pop culture ones. Like I pretty much listen to like current events and like politics. Nice. And, right. Like I listen to like I made the joke earlier the the New York Times Daily. I listen to that pretty much every day, and nice. like uh, I listen to. Uh, like Pod Save America is another one I listen mm. to like pretty much every week. And yeah. like, it's like American politics, which right. you know, being Canadian, yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's more interesting than our politics. Oh, no, no. I try, I try, and, I try and keep up on Canadian stuff too. Sure, like, there's it's, just more humans down there. Yeah, well, times yeah, ten. Absolutely, right. <laughs> it's a good way to keep up with politics too. Like it is. Well, I mean, everything that happens down there is like super relevant up here as well. So that's Definitely. Right. But yeah, I mean, that's that's yeah. pretty much like that's where I go for podcasts. I, mm. I've never been one for uh, for like yeah, kind of. Heavy pop pop ones, yeah. you Russell Brand. Civil Pop? Yeah. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Everyone's got one. But it's actually valid. Try just, I just love that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we don't even exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're like episode zero of our show, episode zero of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Are there any episodes? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Russell Brand, I love Russell Brand, what he's been on lately. Yeah. Mad spiritual tip. Oh, yeah. Mad understanding tip. Yeah. And he's, like, a, a really good speaker. Mm -hmm. And, like, the thing that I like the most about his journey right now is that there was this perception about him that he was, like, this sex fiend. Right. He's this womanizing dude, and he goes into that shit. He yeah. was, like, for him, his addiction issues, he put down substances, and then he turned to sex. Right. 
And then he goes into all that shit and unpacks all of this thing and just like really shines a light on like how much like media influences your perception of somebody. Yeah. Like I had this whole idea of who this dude was and then I hear him speak and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. This guy has this level of self-awareness of like what he was. Yeah. Maybe he was actually how they portrayed him. I think to an extent, to an extent for sure. I definitely watch like his seven or eight minute a YouTube vid of like Russell Brand hitting on yeah, like yeah. TV hosts and the dude's wheels are just strong. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing after this? Like, it's <laughs> just like, yes. I mean, wait, no. I have to keep my composure. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Right? <laughs> like, he, he, yeah, that dude was a wheeler for sure. But I love, um, I like his take. My. I wouldn't say I have an all-time favorite podcast, but one of my most listened to is Rich Roll. He's this uh, former alcoholic now. His new addiction is fitness, and he's an ultra-endurance athlete. He's nice. been on Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan hasn't been on his show. Yeah, Hyper. Everyone's been on Joe Rogan. That's actually valid. <laughs> Dude, been I've been on, on Joe Rogan. <laughs> Hyper. Yeah, but Richard Trier just got, just got invited. And here on my podcast team, so. <laughs> Yeah, and... Yeah, roll, unbelievable, hyper vegan, hyper woke, everything yeah. is like, you know, be peaceful. And it's cool when you have uh, someone that's gone through like different phases in their life and they can recognize in other people that like go through different phases. Like right. when you're a kid, it's hard to, I mean, it's easy. When you're six, you can look at a four year old and be like, dude, pss, grade two is going to just blow your mind. Dude. You have no <laughs> idea. Dude. But then like we become adults and then kind of lose that just bear trust and we kind of it's rightfully so like yeah. if you are in school with someone and they've just done two curriculums ahead they know that you're gonna have to do five over four in grade yeah. five and you're like i thought it was the numerator had to be more than the denominator they switched it on me <laughs> but yeah so i don't know it's it's cool to find people we trust in this age of so much info it's so hard to navigate where facts what the fuck is a fact now, man? <laughs> Shaka bars, dude. He'll yeah. have his IG will have freaking fact checkers. Have you ever seen this on Instagram? Where it's like facts in this video might be false. What? Oh, really? Like Instagram posts? Literally that? on his thing, facts in this are false. And I'm like, what? And like, see why facts are false. CBS says this can't be true because of this. NBC says this can't be true because of this debunking the dude and I'm like why is it the only ep the only account I've ever seen this on is this one because he's got a million followers or whatever I mean, is that like a recent thing though because I know like they started like Twitter started fact checking like Trump and stuff like that um, yeah. so I don't know is that like they've just started doing that I mean I think that's probably a good thing on his is it Instagram doing it as a third party or is he doing it on his own videos he is I don't think he's involved okay. the captions are like the fact checkers think this video is whack but really it's the truth blah 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 type thing and oh it was about <laughs> how's that again? yeah who's got hey, Kelsey can you bring some tinfoil please uh, uh, it was about RFID I was just kidding by the way it's about RFID tags being in Victoria's Secret bras okay so they're talking about like child sex trafficking and this woman is like yeah okay. children are famously wearing Victoria's Secret bras <laughs> This is true, or perhaps not, but it's just like, okay, check your daughter's stuff, check this out, and she cuts the tag, that lady on the video wasn't lying, she wasn't tripping, cuts the thing, takes out, she's like, look, I'm cutting this right here in front of the video, and takes out this, like, thin plastic film, and she's like, it looks like there's a camera in here, man, like, <laughs> And of course, she goes too far with that stuff, but at the same time, it's like, dude, that's a, that lady was not crazy, and it's like, this is wrong, this isn't fact. There aren't RFID tags in your bras, like, there's no chance, that would never happen, come on, now, don't be silly. But, places use RFID tags for inventory. Wait, where, where, where are we falling on this? I, I, <laughs> I, are, we, are we saying, are, don't we decided there are RFID tags in I stay on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> Shackabars is certainly, I believe he's making the argument that they're tracking titties. They're tracking women Unfortunately, by their breasts. not women, children by their breasts. What? But you mean like, like teenage girls? Yes. Okay, I see, I see. And trying to find them through their Wayfair web pages where oh, it's man. like, here she is, find her, nab her, get her, 
bring her in, massage 200 bucks. Oh, you don't want to massage for 200 bucks anymore? Get someone to massage for 200 bucks, you don't have to anymore. You're down to recruit now? Perfect, and then the network is built. I don't know if you guys are up on that Epstein. I knew you were going to go there. I knew you were going to go there. I thought we were that Epstein this dog. Ich will. Ich want to do Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Mateo, can you cut that, please? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, listen. <laughs> Palace's, uh, Palace's you know, monologue on yeah. child trafficking. Yeah. Know, let's, uh, Got it in. Let's shore that one up. Got it in. <laughs> Got it in. It'll be an episode. One for episode. One for episode. Palace's yeah, awesome. child trafficking right. ring. Whoa, no. <laughs> no, I thank you. You wanted to put RFID chips in kids' bras, though. <laughs> Honestly, that's. Don't say that couldn't be a joke, though. That could be a joke of some kind. Perhaps? Could be. Please? As long as it's funny. I guess I should do the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well, shall it be written? Go ahead and write the joke. Shall it be real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fucking sweet. Yeah, well, we got our little wokeness in. I mean, sprinkled in there. Yeah. This whole man, we're freaking creation itself, and like saying, you know what, I'm gonna do something, and I'm not just gonna consume 24 seven. Yeah. I'm gonna put something out there, start from the beginning to the end, mm-hmm. respect the yeah. laws of like completing things, and plan, execute, freaking finish, reflect, do all that shit, and then that's like. It's underrated as like being a champion of life. You can show somebody, dude, you can do your thing. You have your dream. Yeah. Like going back to comedians and you know, Bill Burr, I hope this isn't a hot take, but you know, there was some Bill Burr destroying feminists video and the lady's like, what do you think about no women being uh, uh, nominated at the awards? And he's like, you know what? If women want awards, make your own awards. <laughs> like you want an award so badly, put on your own award show. And it's kind of like, oh, it's not like that, Bill, but at the same time, I had an award show for like me and like three other people like a few weeks ago. Yeah. It was extremely special and it was very deep to my heart. Our yeah. little music podcast, we had a little like Grammys for the songs we played, like best rock song, blah, 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 blah. and it was just like, wow, I was moved to tears way more than I was <laughs> during the Oscars ever, <laughs> except for maybe when they won the freaking... Oscar for the Selma song, Glory, Common and his buddy. But outside that, like... I don't think I've ever watched the Oscars. Me either. No, my it seems pretty boring. boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but... Well, maybe I'll read the list after the... Straight. 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 I will say I did get Spotlight from the Oscars. They won Best Picture. Spotlight, I highly recommend that movie. Okay. It's about an uh, investigative journalist. Dude, nice. <laughs> in uh, Boston who finds a... Priest. Oh, I, I remember hearing about this. Was yeah. possibly yeah. getting involved in it with a young person in a way that a priest yeah. shan't. But uh, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't know whom's is whom's. Whom's is whom's. That's really the question at the end of the day here. Is whom's is whom's. Yeah, but that, okay. Spotlight. I just want to say one more thing about Spotlight. It was awesome because in this like CGI world of movies. Now that we live in right. the Michael Bay, you're basically watching like a crappier Final Fantasy X cinema when you <laughs> go to the cinema yeah. now. I feel like, like, why is it that back in the day I would be like, I'm down. Oh, cutscene, cutscene. Everyone get in here, watch a cutscene. It's crazy. But now when I watch a two-hour cutscene, I'm like, this is horrible, and I don't even want to watch like CGI. But yeah. Spotlight has no CGI. It's very much like dialogue based. And, yeah. You know. Do you think like those movies though, like back when we were younger, were actually better, or were we just like dumber? I think. A little, little bit of both. Mm. I think nostalgia goggles a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think that's gotta be. That's yeah. gotta be. I feel like part of it, right? Like, I don't think it. they were ever good. Right. No. Yeah. I mean, if, if you go back and watch Blade, right. that looks like a PlayStation 1 cutscene. Oh, for sure. When, like, the clown explodes. it's You're counting pixels. Yeah. But it was new. It was different. Yeah. That was the difference. Was that like we've gone from the land before time? That that's a pretty fair point, right? right? Like we've we've seen it all before at this point. Right. Yeah. They they're just wringing the sponge over yeah. and over and over again. So I'm like, let's take a risk, and then we can get into the animatronic being such a better shell in the timelessness of Jurassic Park. I also think oh, that yeah, we're just sure. like we're less cynical when we're kids. 
We're less critical. This is true. Yeah. We're like watching it just for the enjoyment of it. We're not trying to fucking dissect right. it and psychoanalyze the characters right. and like do all this stuff. We're just like, this is a movie about a vampire right. kicking vam- vampire hunter. So kicking vampires. Yeah, and I'm like, how sick is that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's cool as hell. How much of it is it that we were kids though, and how much of is it that it was the nineties? Because I just feel like it's not necessarily our time frame. But just like now, in general, stuff is more meta now, or is it just that I understand the world more and pick up on the meta stuff more? I think that's, that's probably more your perspective. We're talking about Shrek today at work and right. about how like a lot of the jokes I didn't pick up. Right. Oh yeah, until definitely. I was yeah. older. Yeah, and like I also think that like in terms that '90s thing, mm. I think we're just getting older, and like that was just our time. Yeah. Shit. '90s, early 2000s. Like if you ask somebody who grew up in like the 70s or the 80s and like hair bands was the thing right and it was like then the 90s came and nirvana came they're like less bullshit like yeah, yeah, the yeah. 80s were better mm. you know like right. i don't agree with like the way that music is going right now right but how many people said that about like rap in the 90s true or about how like you know music yeah. was you know what i mean and like yeah. how much of it is that just like we're just kind of out of the loop with what's hot with young people <laughs> yeah i've been thinking about that because uh, I think it's a fine line. I don't. I have no idea because like, I'm biased for sure. Like, my brother and I accidentally caught an episode of Xena Warrior Princess a few weeks ago. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Yeah. But that's a show that's like awesome. Yeah. And it was kind of like hokey to go back in time and watch it, but like we just sure we were critiquing it like we were you know twenty twenty guys with podcasts and vlogs and webisodes, but <laughs> freaking we. We're still like, oh god, that's sick. Oh man, that's cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that shot, like, whoa, a 10 second shot of her face? Like, this doesn't happen anymore. Like, it's yeah, like yeah. all the time. That's all the a fun way to look at it, too, though, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there, there's definitely, like, there's definitely a lot to be taken from, like, you know, older attempts and stuff like that. It's. Right? You, you might, you could say that it's, like, objectively worse. Yeah. But it, it's, like, subjectively interesting. Yeah. So, okay, hold on. There's two things we can hit on here. Pro wrestling and Game of Thrones. Yeah. In the sense of when we were younger, we, I've, I'm kind of speaking for you here, but cut me off if I'm wrong. We didn't, like, look as much into the behind-the-scenes stuff of wrestling. Mm-hmm. We just accepted that Batista <laughs> wanted to powerbomb Triple H through the table because Evolution tried to screw him over. Yeah. And we didn't go, like, and in Thrones... It was similar in that, like, we got so into the analysis of it. That's what killed it for me, is that I analyzed every possible realistic outcome of the show based on the history and the books, and then, and then, and and it's like, okay, if it's not this, then it's not, then it's this. And if it's not this, then it's this, it's not this, then it's this. Like, we knew every possible thing that would be. And did people grill shows like that back in the day? You know what I mean? They didn't have the internet. Yeah, that's definitely a huge thing there. But I don't know, I, I don't... I don't know if I agree on your Thrones take there. That was like almost my favorite part of it was the depth of it at first, right? Like that, there was, that was so my much part going on and like there was so much to dig into and stuff like that. Dude. The only the only reason that it like left such a bad taste in everyone's mouth is because like that just stopped. Right. Right? And then, you know, it's hard to blame them too much because, you know, they weren't the you huge fantasy right. writers, right. Like George R. R. Martin, right. right? Right. So like, I mean, they were never going to do as good right. a job. Mm-hmm. They did, you know, a substantially worse job than they could have probably. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like, the, yeah, I mean, that's that was really the issue with it for me. Like, I, I don't think the, the overanalyzing killed it at all for me. I think that that just had me more invested. That's valid. Mm-hmm. That's valid. The succinct take about Game of Thrones I heard from someone was that the thing that made Thrones beautiful it wasn't the pyro, it wasn't the blah, 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 it was the um how much they respected the story yeah and then they just threw that out at the end it was like every sentence was absolutely weight and then at the end they just said let's finish this and go pretty much our stuff everyone yeah. like yeah, well, so- they, they wanted to do their star wars trilogy or whatever yeah. they, they got a star wars trilogy and then it got taken away from them afterwards yeah. actually yeah so thrones died for nothing basically yeah i will say that Ouch. We'll say that. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right with it, man, because if they were going to do my boys Star Wars like that. That's actually about <laughs> Star Wars has been through enough, man. <laughs> That's true. true. <laughs> I, haven't, I didn't even watch the third one of the most recent trilogy. I, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> People watch Tryhards. Um, I mean, shit. If you like us, 
This is us expressing ourselves on screen in a really cool way, I think. Yeah. Um, I think we've gotten pretty good at this already, and I think we're getting better at it. 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 I think we're getting better 